collecting resumes from people who uh, are interested in possibly uh, being part of our anchor nursery school staff. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to have either a teacher and a teacher assistant or two teachers, uh, with one being the lead teacher. Um, mm -hmm. And we have some resumes already. And uh, so we're going to be trying to move on that as quickly as we can in the coming weeks, uh, in the coming week or so. Um, yeah. Uh, the other uh, other piece of that is we haven't gotten organized on this yet, but um, we really ought to, and that is the uh, hybrid learning center that we've been talking about. Um, I haven't heard back from Middle Country School District yet, and uh, uh, you know I think I'm starting to think that regardless of whether we hear from them, uh, we ought to just go ahead and uh, you know start making plans, get a little team together of people who want to work on uh, creating that hybrid learning center where kids can come uh, during the day, uh, maybe even, you know, early in the morning uh, when parents are going to work or stay later in the afternoon after until parents get home. Um, and, uh, and then shape a program about that. Uh, I talked with Joyce. She's interested in, in providing uh, different kinds of music that they could could do um, some of the singing perhaps not uh, at least at this stage but um, you know there are things that you can do musically and um, and of course we have outdoor activity that kids can have and we have another room that you know we have a, the worship space and so on where you can have uh, movies and things like that for kids so um, we'll see it could turn out to be a very um, interesting program but for that, we need to have a team to plan it and then uh, probably hire some people who, uh, you know, will come here early in the morning or stay here late in the afternoon and help us work things out. We're also starting to get some uh, inquiries about Anchor Nursery School. I responded to two of them on, on email just uh, today. So, um, you know, and they're, they're interested in five mornings a week, by the way. Good. So that's a possibility that we'll <clears throat> be expanding Anchor Nursery School rather than uh, shutting it down. Um, so one uh, one other thing is that uh, yesterday I decided to take a day off. And so since it was my day off, I thought I would uh, go shopping for a refrigerator for the church. Oh. <laughs> what you do when you're not working, right? So... Uh, we went all the way over to Deer Park thinking that PC Richards Clearance Center might have something, and we found out that there's virtually nothing, wow. nothing in the clearance oh. center at all. And then uh, we came back to Selden, went to Home Depot, and found out in Home Depot that they have no stock at all, and everything's on back order if it's ordered at all. And uh, but they had oh. one. They had one that was uh, available. Uh, September 5th or September 8th for delivery. So oh. we ordered it. Perfect. <laughs> so, Perfect. so we're getting a new refrigerator for the church replacement. Wonderful. Yes, I thank you for that text you gave me. <laughs> that was yeah. good news. You know, I, it wasn't, I didn't really advertise it much, but I, I knew that uh, DU had been involved in that little project. So yeah, yeah. So be that, that, that was great. Yeah. I can so that's, to buy a window instead. That's a lot of news about things. Okay, I, I, I don't really mean to uh, take a lot of time from the Bible study uh, for news, but it's just been that kind of week. Uh, so yeah. that's good news. All right. But so things, things, things we can on. think about. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. and pray about these things too, because these are things, uh, you know, definitely, you know, Spirit of God is leading us here. And, uh, and I don't have a clue as to where it's all going to wind up. <laughs> But anyway, all right, uh, let's see. So I'm going to go to sharing the screen. And I'm going to go to this PowerPoint. Pastor, I just want to say you don't know where it's going to. It's going to glorify God and bring Amen. more people to the gospel. All right. Amen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Something new has been added on the screen. Oh, wow. Oh, Look at that. How fancy. fancy. Well, I had some time in my hands today. Yeah. I thought, let's play around with it a little bit and, and make something a little different. 
So that's what we have. Um, and uh, in some places, the, the printing may be compromised a little because of the colors, but uh, uh, that's what we got. Um, also, I made some changes in the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, cool. You know, taking uh, taking off with some of the advice uh, from from Vicar Eric uh, over the past few weeks as we went on Bible studies, and um, also um, today in particular because of the particular text that we have. I have two different versions, uh, in two different scripture versions uh, for the, uh, the reading from Romans chapter 12, verses yeah. 1 through 8. Um, and Romans, so, Romans. yeah, these two, uh, Romans 12, 1 to 8. <clears throat> and these two versions are uh, different in style. Mm. So here is uh, the steps in inductive study. Is that cool? Oh, cool. wow. Wow. So we read the text from start to finish. We review the general setting of the text, the author, historical location, geographical location, audience. Now, this is helpful when we, you know, some of, especially with the gospel lessons where things change uh, from week to week. Uh, when, in the past several weeks, we've been looking at Romans. So uh, much of this is the same. And then uh, ask four key questions, okay? So mm -hmm. these are the two. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. nice. I like, oh, I like the spider. Mm -hmm. I haven't figured out yeah. where the spider came from. That was something they gave me. Uh, uh. Part of the thing. But anyway, Romans. Well, we're weaving a web. One to eight. Yeah, all right. So this is the uh, text for this, this week, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. <clears throat> okay. All right. This is from J.B. Phillips' Modern English Translation. So, uh, hmm, I don't know if I can move that. Yeah, I can't. Good. Okay. So, uh, need to have somebody read this uh, from the screen. Who'd like to read this? I'll do it. So, okay. uh, Romans 12. We have seen God's mercy and wisdom. How shall we respond? With eyes wide open to the mercies of God. I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you sneeze, squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your mind from within so that you may pr prove and practice that the plan of God for you is good. Meet all his demands and move toward <clears throat> the goals of true mature maturity by the light of the faith that God has given you all. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Can you? That, what version is this? This is still the. Uh, this is the okay. rest of the lesson. As your as your spiritual teacher, I give these this piece of advice to each one of you. Don't cherish exaggerated ideas of yourself or your importance, but try to have a sane estimate of your capabilities by the light of the faith that God has given to all, to you all. For just as you have many members in one physical body and those mm -hmm. members dif differ in their functions, so we, through many, mem many in number, compose one body in Christ and all members are of one another. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Continuing. Oh, still going? Through the yeah. grace of God, we have different gifts. It is our gift. If our gift is preaching, let us preach to the limits of our vision. If it is serving others, let us concentrate on our service. If it is teaching, let us give all we have to our teaching. And if our gift be the stimulating of the faith of others, let us set ourselves to it. Let the man who is called to give, give freely. That the man who wields authority think of his responsibility and let the man who feels sympathy for his fellow act cheerfully. Okay. That's the whole text in large that's print. Cool. That's why. It's yeah, that's cool. <laughs> now, um, just a couple things. Uh, first of all, you notice that it was written by an Englishman because the word mold is M O U L D. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. oh really? Okay. Oh. That is, that is an English way of spelling that word. Oh, the other thing is that it was written a while 
this was translated a while back. I can remember this from probably before my seminary days. So it's over it's close to 50 years ago. Um, and it might be even more than that, uh, that it was, that this translation was, was made. And that's why you have um, uh, language that is not gender neutral. Let the man mm -hmm. who is called to give, et cetera. Uh, or uh, okay. I, you know, encourage you brothers, all right? Um, nowadays, of course, all those words would be um, uh, changed mm -hmm. if, uh, if the reading uh, justifies changing them. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, okay. Um, let's read the other one, um, and then we can talk about both of them. All right, this is going to be right, this is from the New English Bible. Again, English, England. Mm -hmm. But somebody want to read this off the screen? Sure, I'll read it. Okay, good. Um, Therefore, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, alive holy and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this present world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test and approve what is the will of God, what is good and well-pleasing and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think, but to think with sober discernment as God has distributed to each of you a measure of faith. For just as in one body, we may have mem many members and not all the members serve the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members who belong to one another. And we have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If the gift is prophecy, that individual must use it in proportion to his faith. If it is service, he must serve. If it is teaching, he must teach. If it is exhortation, he must exhort. If it is contributing, he must do so with sincerity. If it is leadership, he must do so with diligence. If it is showing mercy, he must do so with cheerfulness. Okay, so now you can tell the difference between uh, the New English Bible, which is a translation of the text, and mm -hmm. a paraphrase, which is what you read in the beginning. Right. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. I, as I look, as I thought about it while it was being read, I was thinking maybe we should have started with the New English rather than the other one. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll take that as a note to myself in the future. Because um, I think uh, when you hear the, the literal text, then yeah. you hear the uh, paraphrase, Maybe that's the right way to do it. I don't know. Oh. We'll see how it turns out. So anyway, this is the two, uh, the two lessons. And I'm going to go to the uh, first question. Now I've changed, I told you, I changed the format of the question. So this one is, I, I call it recalling the text. All right, just thinking about the text itself. What words or details stand out after hearing the text? What questions did it create for you? What did the text say to the people to whom it was addressed or written? I have to correct that there. Yeah. Mm. All right. So anyway, mm. recalling the text. All right. This is uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. Uh, again, uh, we've been in Romans a lot uh, lately uh, mm. on Tuesdays. Um, if it's Tuesday, it must be Romans. Um, <laughs> I, I remember as a teenager, right, as a teenager, maybe 15 years old, something like that. Uh, in my church, uh, Dr. George Aus, A-U-S, uh, came from Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, to our church for a week. And we had a spiritual renewal week. And, he, uh, and during the spiritual renewal week, we'd get together every night at the church. We would have a bunch of hymns and prayers. We'd always have an offering, of course. And... Uh, and then we would hear like, oh, 45 minutes or even more of a presentation on uh, whatever the, the theme of the spiritual renewal week was. And mm. the particular week I'm thinking of when Dr. Oss was there was based on Romans. Mm. Now, somewhere around the church here is my confirmation Bible, which I 
seem to always lose. But in, <laughs> in that confirmation Bible, I have all my notes that I took when I was in high school with mm -hmm. Dr. Oss being there. And just uh, fast forwarding a few years, when I was in seminary at Luther Seminary, I'm uh, talking about four years of college and maybe two, three years of seminary. So by that point, um, I actually had Dr. Oss as one of my teachers. Mm. So that was really cool. Uh, he was from Brooklyn, uh, Norwegian. And he was, uh, I remember uh, one, one week he was not with us in class because uh, he had gone back to Brooklyn because he was going to meet with the Norwegian Youth Fellowship. Hmm. And that fellowship was, uh, average age was about 70. Because it went back to when he was an assistant pastor in Brooklyn. So he was a pastor to that group and the ones that were still alive were meeting together for a week uh, in uh, Brooklyn. So anyway, a little bit of reminiscing. With all that in the background, do you remember anything at all of the text that I read? Uh, words or details? I'll, I will go back up. Mm. I'll stick with the New English Bible here. Oh. Therefore, well, we're not, we're not supposed to think uh, more highly of ourselves than other people. We have, we have to, you know, we have to know uh, what, what we're good at, you know, and, and, and serving people, yeah. Yeah, you could have done Dr. Ross's lecture. <laughs> very, good, very good start, yeah. Yeah, he's writing to the Romans. He's already mm -hmm. talked about how, you know, we, we are justified by grace through faith and how we are righteous because of faith. And mm -hmm. now we, at the beginning of chapter 12, the first word in the New English Bible and in the uh, version that we'll use on Sunday is therefore. Yeah. Therefore, okay. Put it simply, he's had 11 chapters where he has uh, been laying the foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, having laid that foundation, telling us, you know, what God has done for us, now yeah. he says, therefore, yeah. and it's always an important word in the Bible, yeah. therefore, because it means everything that came before it is really important. And yeah. now what's going to come after it is uh, equally important because it has to do with us in a different way. All right. So I exhort you. What does it mean to exhort? Is that a word you use often? <laughs> no, that's why I don't know what it actually means. Does it mean like plead with you? Yep, there it is in the J.B. Phillips version. Beg you. Yeah. Beg, Beg you. Yeah. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren. That's how I learned it in confirmation class. Yeah. I appeal oh. to you. All right. I beg you. Dictionary says strongly encourage. Mm. Yeah, strongly encourage you. All right. right. That exhortation is is the kind of thing you, you hear it from me all the time, but I never call it that because uh, you know we don't know what the word means. But I you hear a lot of <laughs> exhortation. Uh, mm. You know, with wide with eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers as an act of intelligent worship mm -hmm. to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice mm -hmm. consecrated to him and acceptable by him so what do you think is all meant, meant there and that uh a living sacrifice mm -hmm. uh, a new life well i'm reading from uh you know with the footnotes uh, what did you say? Uh, living a, a new life of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Having okay. yeah. Mm. And go on. Was there more? Yeah, you remember uh, mm -hmm. in uh, other places where he's talking about uh, that uh, if the Spirit of Christ lives in you, okay. Yeah. Now yeah. you are alive. Right. 
Yeah, right. You have died with Christ, he said in chapter mm -hmm. 6, now, uh, so that you may walk in newness of life. Okay? Yeah. So he's saying, I, I appeal to you or I beg you as an act of spiritual worship. That's how the NRSV mm -hmm. will translate it. As act of yeah. spiritual or intelligent worship. You know, mm -hmm. intentional worship might be another way of putting it. Thoughtful mm -hmm. worship, okay? Uh, in other words, you know, we, we, give, we give offerings uh, in, at various times, all right? And sometimes we just give them be, out of, uh, you know, maybe because we, we share a common cause or maybe because we, somebody appeals to us and, it, you know, we want to try to help out and because we're yeah. kind or whatever. But, you know, a, a thoughtful act of worship is one where you're really thinking about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, an act of spiritual worship. This is coming, you know, this is not coming from, from the checkbook or the pocketbook or the, you know, wallet. This is coming from the heart. From the heart and the mind, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. And from the mind. That's very true. Intelligent mm -hmm. Im implies from your mind. You're thoughtful yeah. about it, all right? So you give him your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, there again, that's kind of an interesting phrase, a living sacrifice. Um, mm. one of, you know, in Bible Gateway, they, they list, uh, oh, numerous uh, English translations. And one of them they saw there was the, uh, the Jewish Bible. Uh, and so in the Jewish Bible, I, went, I looked up this passage, and um, mm. in that uh, Jewish Bible, it mentioned something about uh, giving your sacrifice uh, at the temple, hmm. not to be burned, hmm. but as a living sacrifice, okay? Oh. Hmm. So, you know, in the Jewish Bible, that's, that's what sacrifices were. You bring something to the temple, uh, hmm. you place it on the altar, it is killed, oh. all right, and the blood comes out, and then hmm. it is burned, all right? So that's that's what the kind of sacrifice is that that they were accustomed to as Jewish people. Mm, yeah. But the Gentiles probably understood that kind of sacrifice as well, coming from a pagan background. Mm. But this is a living sacrifice, and this is your body, not somebody else's body. Certainly not yeah. a uh, a sheep or a goat that you no. bring, that you raised, perhaps, or that you bought in the market outside mm -hmm. the door <laughs> uh, <laughs> of the temple. But uh, mm -hmm. this is something uh, that is your body, a living mm -hmm. sacrifice, okay? Consecrated, which consecrated means set apart for, okay? Mm -hmm. To him and acceptable by him, all right? So mm -hmm. this is what God really wants, mm -hmm. okay? That's what it means by acceptable. Mm -hmm. Right. What do you think of the next yeah. phrase there? Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds, your minds from within, so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for for you is good, meets all His demands, and moves towards the goal of true maturity. Mm -hmm. That's a long sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's he talking about there? Mm -hmm. I know that Sheila understands this. <laughs> Sheila, you there? Um, I'm, here. I'm I'm listening. Yeah. But you... I, I like the, uh, the beginning of it. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. Mm -hmm. Because how often do we, sometimes we're followers, you know, and we follow what other people are doing. And, and, and we might have hesitation about what they're doing. And sometimes we just follow, you know, and, um, and is that, and, and a lot of times, sometimes it's not right. Mm. You know, it's, it's not, um, I don't know how to explain it, but well, how do you, but it, you know, question. don't let, don't let the world around you influence you. Right. Well, when you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, what renews your mind? What? How are we transformed? God transforms my mind. Right. Isn't it through God's word? 
Yes. The, the reading of his word to find out what he wants us to do. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let God read. But sometimes, but some, yeah, but sometimes, but sometimes the world um, leads us in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let God remold your minds from within. Right. And mm -hmm. why from within? Well, because that's where the Spirit of God dwells. Yeah. Right? That's what he's already said in a few chapters earlier. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that, why should we be transformed or, or uh, remolded? So you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good, that it meets yeah. all his demands, and moves toward the goal of true maturity mm. by the light of the faith that God has given to you all. I think that's the, mm. the next sentence, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, towards the goal of true maturity. So this is a part, I think, that, that we, un, and we, and we underestimate in, in the ministry of the church. And that is that, you know, um, when people become members of the church, it's a starting point. Hmm. it's not the end right and it's the same thing oh, no. we recognize that as adults about confirmation for example mm. the starting point yeah it's not the end and the goal is true maturity and i'm working on that <laughs> <laughs> i've got a ways to go but you know i'm getting there and i'm more mature now than i was uh you know 50 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's where I think um, in some churches, they actually have new members come for classes yep. to learn more. And I think that's where we need to look at that a little closer because yep. I think that would help people really understand what they're hearing on Sunday. Yeah. It's one of the tensions we have as a liturgically oriented church that when we get people together um, the focus is, is, is almost exclusively on, on what we do as worship rather than mm -hmm. worship and learning. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, in some of the born again churches, uh, the emphasis, uh, is much more on learning and less on liturgy. Right. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we tend to put all the weight on liturgy that, you know, somehow if you just keep saying the same words over and over again for 50 years, people will yeah. learn. <laughs> what right, but mean? people don't but people don't always understand it yeah Exa yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah, yeah and i think this 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 scripture the the um the first translation it says yeah. that what is god planned for you mm -hmm. you know you need to be filled with the holy spirit so that you can be transformed or or become the plan that god has for you and i think a lot of people don't understand that yeah yeah and it's it's hard to get that across yeah exactly exactly but you know and and we don't organize ourselves that way you know i mean uh you know we consider it a struggle to get people to commit one hour a week to church right <laughs> and for some folks you know one hour a month is is uh is a considerable sacrifice so to speak uh, yeah then it goes down from there you know uh how do you grow to maturity with one hour a week yeah. Or, or a month, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's almost like you know they say it's it's like an inoculation with a vaccine. You get something, mm -hmm. a, you get a dead, you know, you get a dead uh, virus in your body, and that's going to protect you from, you know, from the liveliness of the gospel. Hmm. So, oh, well, it shouldn't be so cynical. Uh, here's <laughs> here's what the what the apostle continues to say. But just as you have many members in one physical body. The word mm. members, by the way, you know, is an interesting word. Um, it, the word okay. members really is related to the various parts of the body. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what a member yeah. is. A oh. member is a part of a body. So mm -hmm. a finger is a member, a hand is a member, an arm is a member. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's a, right. So like when you dismember a body, all right, everybody can figure mm. out what that means. Mm. But... <laughs> 
if you remember a body, uh, people don't know quite what that means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, the word member is a physical term, a biological term. Uh, we have many members in one physical body, but they differ in functions. So we compose one body in Christ and we're all members of one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course we are. People Otherwise, are. you know, you don't have hands laying around here and there or feet or whatever. And then he goes on to speak about different gifts. Mm -hmm. All right. Now here the, the, in J.B. Phillips, the word is preaching, which is probably what, what, what was intended. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's translated prophecy. <clears throat> or proclamation, mm. right. but prophecy in the Old Testament is basically proclamation. Mm. And that, of course, is related to preaching because it's, it's an oral communication, public communication. Uh, it's indiscriminate, it goes out to everybody. It's not like a you know, mm. focused uh, message, like correspondence or something. So, mm. yeah, so. My, my pastor says that the same thing that you're saying. Prophecy is actually pro uh, proclaiming the word of God. So, yeah, yeah, proclaiming, yeah. and and that always has a future to it. So there's always a future predictive character to preaching. Oh, that's a good point. You know, it's not like a prophecy uh, it shouldn't be predictive, but it's predictive in the sense of, you know, it's it's kind of like a, you know, if if God has His way with you, this is what's going to happen, folks. Mm. You know, the kingdom of God is coming. Amen. So, anyway, uh, you know, let us reach to the limit of our vision. I really like that, you know. That really kind of uh, pokes me uh, personally as a preacher. You know, preach a limit of our vision. Uh, and our vision is not really limited. I mean, that's the irony of it, right? Right. Um, but we limit ourselves, but God doesn't limit us. Mm -hmm. No, we're talking about kingdom of God, right? Then if it is serving others, now you see, now there's Deacon D right away. <laughs> Not just preaching, but serving others. Right, that's what I like to yeah. do. I like to, I like to serve. I don't like to preach. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, it's on an equal level. That's mm -hmm. the point. Mm. Let's concentrate on our service. If that's what you're there for, then do it, right? If it's mm. teaching, let us give all we have to our teaching. Mm. You know, and, it, it, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, it's pastors sometimes uh, lament that Sunday school teachers sometimes are like, you know, uh, one hour ahead of their students in terms of their learning. Mm. <laughs> because they, they looked at the lesson plan before the kids arrived. Yeah. Right, right. Not to, yeah. You know, we gotta yeah. we gotta be further advanced than that. You know, mm. especially if you're a teacher. You know, the Bible mm. says that you know, if you're a teacher, you've got real responsibility. Mm. And God is not pleased with teachers who don't teach well. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. they're, they're in trouble. If our gift be the stimulating of the faith of others. Let us set ourselves to it. You know, think about that. You know, mm -hmm. you may not be a great preacher. You may not be physically able to do a lot of serving. You may not have yeah. a lot of training in terms of teaching. But mm -hmm. you may be able to help other people grow in their faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and here's another one. Let the one who is called to give, give freely. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we ask people to make pledges, uh, and some people will do that. A lot of people were reluctant to do even that, you know, a financial pledge of giving. But, you know, if they give a pledge, uh, sometimes for people that's, that's a goal uh, or maybe a ceiling. And, you know, that's as far as they go in terms of giving. Well, the one who's called to give, give freely, you know. Uh, you should, yeah. You should never think that you can do nothing. Uh, even if you, if, if you are in bed and you can't get up, you can always pray yeah. for your church, for your pastor, or something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, don't feel that uh, you're no good. Yeah. 
and and one of the things that we can help each other with is by being in touch with people who are not that able to do things to <clears throat> encourage them to use the gift they have to pray yeah right because if you don't know about what's happening with people's lives it's pretty hard no. to pray for them you know then your pray your prayers are just kind of like you know balloons that go up in the air but you don't know where you know where to go on uh, let right. the wield yeah. authority think of his responsibility mm. that has to do with leadership in the church mm. Mm -hmm. Again, you know there are people who will not serve on a council you know in the church and mm -hmm. you know sometimes they say oh come on you know but maybe they don't have the gift of leadership maybe mm -hmm. they they know it and they say you know that's not my gift right. yeah let someone mm -hmm. else be a leader i'm a good follower i'm a good right. surfer i can encourage yeah people right faith. i can give freely but i'm not a leader Mm -hmm. okay yeah. right right you know that's just as important as the mm -hmm. others right right and, oh yeah because all you know, the members work together yeah yeah all, all right. the members of the body work together nobody is above mm -hmm. another person yeah. yeah yeah that's what paul's saying he's a right. all these gifts let the one who feels sympathy for his fellows act cheerfully mm. right so you know if you're going to you know one of the things you can do is cheer people up one of the things I really love about Donna Millwater is that, you know, she comes around and she cheers people up. Oh, even, when not, even when she's not feeling that great, you know. <laughs> you right. You do right. the same thing for me. I like a cut joke. Sometimes it takes me a while to to figure them out, but <laughs> now, well, I, I don't have that problem because mm. I've heard most of the jokes ten times. <laughs> the fifth or sixth time, I've got them. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's all on the, you know, that's uh, all question one. Question two, I, I change. What message was the author giving to the people for whom the text was written? All right, now I've changed that question. What, what's the message he's trying to give to these people in Rome? What's he trying to say? How would you put that in a sentence or two? Do not conform any longer to the world, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Mm. Okay. That's a good way of quoting the text there. Yeah. Well, I think the message... Can't do any better. I think the message was that they were trying to convey was that um, we're all equal, you know, and everybody has a different gift. And you shouldn't mm -hmm. look down on another person because they only have that particular gift. One person has the gift of preaching. One gift person has the gift of leadership. One person has right. the gift of serving. And just yeah. because you just serve, it, 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 we shouldn't look down on a person mm -hmm. because no. they're just mm -hmm. serving, you know. It, we're all here, you know, um, we all have different talents. Yeah, and it's, it, you know, we're, we're all equal in the sense that all of us have something to give. Exactly. Everybody's exactly. got something to offer, you know. Right. That's the way we sang right. that song, that offertory song. Everybody's got mm -hmm. something to offer, you know. And, uh, right. Right. Everybody has something to offer. Right. Yeah. And right. One of the things we need to do, though, so we need to have the courage to identify the gifts that we see in other people because sometimes they don't see them or maybe they're mm. feeling like they don't have a gift right or maybe they're feeling that somebody else is doing everything so i don't i'm not really needed you know yeah they need, they need encouragement right right yeah yeah exhortation yeah right yeah and i think that's important you know that's one of the gifts we can give to one another to help one another to um, to step into the uh, the role that God has created for them. Yeah, encourage people, right? Yeah, yeah that's what stewardship is all about, you know. Hmm. And generosity, you know, uh, right. encourage other people to use the gifts that get uh, received from God. Hmm. And what a marvelous thing it is, you know. I one of the things that has always bothered me as a pastor is the fact that many of my colleagues have um, 
have grown up in churches where uh, pastors have taken all the responsibility for everything. Mm -hmm. oh. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so they think that that's what they've got to do too. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. there might've been a time when that was the way it was in the church, but it's certainly mm -hmm. in, uh, not what the, uh, what this text is saying. Right. No. Yeah. We all have something to offer. And, you know, I discover more about myself when I, uh, have other people working with me, hmm. you know? Hmm. I, think, I think the same is true in other areas of life. Like in, if you work, you know, like in a hospital or an office yeah. or a law yeah. firm. Sure. You know, not everyone, not one person, you know, one person might be, handle, be able to handle everything, but not true. I mean, it takes a team. Hmm. Right. And you, everybody uses their best skills and that's how the job gets done. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is God's pattern for, for life. Huh? Yeah. Right. We, yeah. We, we're narrowing it down to the life of the church, but, you know, the, the church is kind of a microcosm of the whole world, of life itself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, the, in, in, in all, all different areas of life, uh, mm -hmm. what God is doing with us is what God wants to do <clears throat> in those places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. now, if you, yeah. Go to, you go to a job and you... And you you, uh, you know, have the attitude that your gifts don't matter or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, everybody, everybody uh, has less as a result. Well, let's right. move on because time is moving. Uh, do you see connections between this text and our contemporary setting? We already had one just mentioned there. Mm -hmm. You see other connections uh, between... Uh, what Paul is saying here. And there's going to be more next week, by the way. But next week we pick up on the same chapter. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see that like when with Dee, when she has her desk all full of her little paraphernalia, but I also saw that with my work. I was able to, by the way I behaved mm -hmm. and right. how I treated people is mm -hmm. how I was showing God's love. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big piece of it too. When we're kind to each other, it's a much nicer world. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you know, when we see ourselves as a living sacrifice, not dead meat, mm -hmm. you know, but a living <laughs> sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Mm. That is a very spiritual form of worship. And so worship goes beyond what we do, you know, in a liturgy. It becomes mm -hmm. the whole of our life, right? Mm -hmm. So stewardship and worship are not that far apart. Mm -hmm. Worship is the, uh, or stewardship is the living out of one's worship. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at the fourth question. What can you apply or take away from this text for your life today? What is God saying to you through this text? Well, the first thing I think of is, you know, recognize your gift and, you know, put it to use. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, fulfill your, your goal and destiny by helping others in, in the ways that you feel confident. Yeah, I, I would be so bold as to, to say, you know, Dee mentioned something before about her gifts. I wonder mm -hmm. if any of you um, uh, can say something about yourselves that way in terms of what, what gift you have that uh, yeah. you see that God has given you that you can share. Oh no, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gift too, of course. <laughs> can you think of a I gift that God has given gift. you? Oh, I can't, my door. Not me. <laughs> a gift that God is, is developing in you Well, I think from my pers my personal experience, yeah. I'm I'm a, I'm an encourager. Um, I listen to people, although Rich would not say that, but I do listen <laughs> to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I I, I try to um, encourage people to see their potential, see their worth. I guess right. when people are very down on themselves, mm -hmm. you know, no, you 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 need to, you know. And I've done that in the past, and I try to continue to do that. It's and how does yeah. that make you feel when you do that? 
Sometimes, uh, well, most of the time it's good, but sometimes it's frustrating because it's still people don't see their worth. They can't see the forest through the trees. Yep. And, and that's, you know, a little frustrating, but, um, you know, you can't stop doing it because eventually, um, they'll maybe in their time of quiet, right. um, right. they'll eventually, see it. Right. Eventually they will realize. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it takes a while for the seed to actually germinate. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's important to encourage, even when you don't see the kind of results you are hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other gifts anyone has? Um, I, I know for me, um, I know I don't shut up sometimes. <laughs> like the yap, 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 yap. That's right. I don't so either. This, uh, this is going to be weird, but I, I think listening, um, I have found that when somebody needs somebody to talk to, I can be mm -hmm. there for them. And I can, I can listen. <laughs> um <laughs> I think oh, right. about there was in there was a, a time I was at I left church. We had some some function at church, and I was wearing the Hope Lutheran Church T-shirt with the name on the back. And I walked into I forget what store it was at the time. King Colin maybe was still here. And mm -hmm. when I was online, somebody's going Hope Lutheran Church, Hope Lutheran Church, and I thought it was somebody from church, you know. And I turned around, and it was this girl, three people behind me. And she started talking to me, telling me that she used to come to the church. I don't think she did, because the things that she was saying wasn't making sense. But I think she just needed somebody to talk to. And mm -hmm. as I was getting ready to leave, she stepped out of line and came over to me. And she started talking to me about things going wrong in her life. Yeah. So I listened to her. Yeah. I listened. Aww. And in the end, and she asked me if, she, if I could pray for her. So Aww. I said, Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we, we shared, you know, she told me exactly what was wrong, what she needed prayers for. And then I started leaving it and I was going out. She got back online. Then she yelled again to me and she said, I just want to thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. oh. And there were a lot of people online there. So they're all like looking at me. And I'm like, <laughs> that's what you have uh, to do though. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. have to yeah, go outside that box and Mm -hmm. We have to step out of our comfort zone sometimes. Right. It's like, and I didn't know her from anywhere, you know. Right. And Some, kinda, sometimes that's very hard to step out of our comfort zones. Yeah. yeah. You know, we and don't want to do that. She was but, not very clean looking. That was the other part of it. I kept thinking, oh, please don't let her ask me for a hug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and then uh, even then I felt guilty because I'm a hugger. I'm right. a hugger. Uh, but she appreciated the listening. All right. She appreciated yeah. the listening. And, and you know, it, oh. it, it's not just a passive uh, attitude towards other people. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's sometimes very difficult to listen to people mm -hmm. and, and it's very hard to listen to people without forming opinions or mm -hmm. being judgmental yep. or critical and and people can sense uh, I think sometimes uh, how you're responding so I think that makes a big difference right Donna they get, yes <laughs> if they feel that you that you're actually not going to criticize them or whatever you know well, and you know, and if she did ask for a hug, I would have. I know. I would have. I would have. You know, I, I would have. You know, yeah. but I kept thinking because her shirt was all dirty. It just. Yeah. That, was be, that was before you carried hand sanitizer in your purse. That yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, and yeah. wore a face mask. <laughs> yeah. but that that, that mm. does remind me. That does remind me. Uh. uh Tomorrow, uh, Stacy's going to be submitting the order for the T-shirts for the church. Oh, oh so if yeah. You are, if yeah. you're planning to order a T-shirt, you need to call the church tomorrow morning and let Stacy know, and she'll take down the information. You don't have to pay for it right away, but um, it's important to uh, get the order in because they they set limits. Well, we did, we did, we did put the order in. Um, you know, on a, we got a paper, I think, two Sundays. Yes, if you not, put the paper yeah. in, that's fine. She has that. But if anybody yeah. else... That's... I'm just mentioning oh. that somebody who, who wasn't in I don't have Sunday, the paper. That, yeah. I can oh, just okay. put it on the, over the phone? Just yes, call, she'll take it over the phone. Call on the phone. Yeah. Call her tomorrow morning. You can put the check in next week. 
Yeah, you put it in when the shirts come. Don't worry okay. about it. No. But it, it's uh, it's important and it's a form of advertising. And we put a little bit more on the shirt than just Hope Lutheran Church. We put uh, uh, Making Christ Known and mm -hmm. and the website. <laughs> oh, very good. So oh, it's, it's not something you can wear to the movie theater. But I like to advertise, you know? Well, yeah, all right. It'd be in a walking advertisement, right? Okay, um, any, um, anyone else want to share any gift that they have that God has uh, uh, made you aware of? Uh, I think uh, uh, forgiveness is important, too. If somebody does you wrong, you, do, you don't know whether they meant it or uh, it just came out that way or what, but yeah. give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's probably helped you out in a long time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I think I have the gift like Dee does to minister. I know when I was up at your church, wherever you guys needed help, I just went ahead and. Yes, you whatever. were very great in yes. the kitchen. <laughs> so, you know, and that's the same that's at good. my church. Wherever they have a need, I just kind of go and yes. whatever they need. So. Sheila, you, I, I can remember seeing you cleaning up around our church here. Yeah, yeah, she did, yeah. So, yes, yeah, I, I mm -hmm. that. I think we also need to look at all the members, not just our personal member, but mm -hmm. we need to look at everybody in our church and beyond. And I think we need to start a little bit in our church, reaching out to the different members to make them known mm -hmm. they're not just somebody sitting in the pew for an hour on Sunday, that they're part of a family. Yeah. yeah, and I think mm -hmm. that's something we really we could do some work with, and especially with this COVID. I mean, we've been reaching out and stuff like that, but it's not quite the same as I mean, there's people we haven't seen for months. Yeah, I know, I know. And it's just mm -hmm. like it's um, yeah, that needs to be on the stewardship. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, list, uh, for tonight, the, the generosity, the congregational census. You know, just kind yeah, of yeah, we got to start working on that. Mm -hmm. stuff like that, so yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, we need gifts for that, you know, because not everybody can do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Some don't like to make phone calls. Some people don't like to ask questions. Some people right. don't like exactly. to strangers. And other people are very good at it. Yeah. I get mm -hmm. a lot of annoying phone calls every day from people who are very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> are they from America or a foreign country? No, well, that's nice. It's a multicultural, <laughs> international. <laughs> Oh gosh, anyway, you're right. Yeah, but that, you know, but that's you know, we gotta start. Then that's part of that generosity whole theme. We're yeah. taking care of each other because then we can go out into the community and take care of others. Absolutely. I mean, we are for for many things that we do do, but right. um, mm. well, one thing we didn't we uh, we didn't cover was love. We have you know, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord mm -hmm. and share with God's people who are in need practice hospitality that's very important well we're going to get into some of that next time yeah next week when we go to the later part of the uh chapter okay so yeah right really powerful stuff well, there. Yeah. yeah yeah love covers everything yeah so anyway i hope you think about this text uh, it's one of my favorite texts in the whole bible yeah. um, and mm -hmm. uh you know, They're encouraging, yeah. It, it's got so much, uh, so much power uh, for us mm. all. So, so much responsibility. Yeah, it tells us we have a lot of responsibility as yeah, God's, yeah. as God's people. Yeah, and, and, not just a, and there's a lot of joy to be had. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, sometimes yeah, you can be discouraged or defeated or rejected, but uh, but sometimes it, you can be very surprised by joy as. Uh, that's the name of a book that C.S. Lewis wrote, Surprised by Joy. But oh. you can be, uh, you know, mm. it comes sometimes in the most unexpected moments, which is really mm. cool. So anyway, let's uh, yeah. move on here. Text uh, for this week, uh, Thursday, Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. That's on Thursday. I'll be back again.
chattering away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Now, you guys, if you read that text and think about it, you know, make some mm -hmm. notes also, because um, when we get into conversation about it, then, you know, you're kind of, uh, you know, you're ready to pounce, so to speak. We're ahead of the game. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, and uh, these are the texts coming up next week. Uh, Romans 12, 9 to 21. That's a big, long section, okay? A lot of exhortation in that. So it's the rest of chapter 12 of Romans. And then uh, probably the rest of Matthew uh, 16. Yeah, it looks that way. Which is a very important, very important uh, conversation. Sorry. That's cool. Wasn't me. A little bit of Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this is the prayer for the week. So let's pray. Oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son that we mm. may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Mm. So, well, may God bless you today, the rest of the day, and throughout this week. And I uh, hope we can uh, get back together again on Thursday and yeah. Yeah. look at Matthew. Is it, is tomorrow is the hymn sing. There is. Okay. Yes, the hymn sing is tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank uh, Joyce you. is on vacation this week. Uh, mm. But knowing Joyce, she probably has a computer with her, so don't be surprised yeah. if she shows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But uh, in any event, oh. you're leading it. All okay. right. All right. All right. Yeah. Have a good All one. Right. Bye, everybody. So it's, it's, bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.